Hi everyone, welcome to my green closet and part two of the wool series. Today we are going to chat about how to get more information about if your wool clothing is ethically and sustainably sourced, as well as what the ZQ certification is. Now, before we jump into it though, I want to quickly say that I know for some people wearing animal products is completely off the table, and that's great. Follow your values. I am not at all here to convince you to wear wool if you don't want to. This series is for those who already wear wool or are interested in purchasing wool products to hopefully help you make more informed and conscious decisions. So maybe you've heard of this certification, maybe you haven't, but either way, if you are looking to buy wool clothing, you should know about the ZQ certification. I have previously been quite skeptical of some other wool certifications, but the ZQ certification is the most comprehensive and holistic certification I found, and I think is setting a good precedent for the industry. It focuses mainly on merino wool, which is one of the most popular types of wool for clothing, and also the type of wool most commonly associated with animal cruelty and intensive farming issues. There's also the regenerative organic certification. It's new though, and they're just doing some pilot projects, so it's too early to discuss it, but I'm definitely going to keep my eye on it. Anyways, the ZQ certification covers five key areas, animal welfare, environmental sustainability, fiber quality, traceability, and social responsibility. So we'll quickly talk about each one. Animal welfare is the most important to me and I know many of you, so we'll start there. ZQ has what they call the five freedoms, which essentially allow the sheep to live a natural, safe, and comfortable life. So the sheep graze in open pasture, where they often have an acre or more of space each. They have requirements for the safety of the sheep and to minimize distress, such as during shearing, and certified farms get random third-party audits to ensure that procedures are being followed. Now, two big animal cruelty issues that come up regarding wool are mulesing, which is prohibited on ZQ farms and in New Zealand in general, and live export, which ZQ farmers are also prohibited from, and they are also not allowed to sell their sheep to anyone who might export them for slaughter. So likely the most controversial area of the certification is how it handles aging and end of life. So ZQ farms are typically in mountainous regions of New Zealand. It's a natural habitat and also good for sustainability. However, living in these higher altitudes can be harder on older sheep. So typically when they are seven to eight years old, their health is monitored and they might either be sold to lower farms with easier terrain and climates, or they might be sold to the meat industry. Now, ZQ does have specific requirements for transportation and slaughter, but it is important to note that unless you are sourcing directly from a no-kill fiber farm, older sheep on fiber farms can definitely become meat. So I know for some that is a deal breaker, as always, make your decisions based off of your personal values. For me though, I think, well, First of all, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think merino mutton is a high demand meat product. But also this is a tricky area because if the older sheep are struggling to live and unhealthy in the highlands, then it seems good to not let them suffer and die there. And I think there could maybe be some better policies in this area. I still overall can get behind what the ZQ certification is trying to do. I also had a chat with Edzard, who is the co-founder of Sheep Inc, which is a very sheep and supply chain focused brand that uses ZQ wool about their perspective on animal welfare. The animal welfare piece, obviously super important when it comes to the wool industry and the argument that it harms animals is right. And they are extraordinary animals and they should be treated in that way. You know, the really damaging thing is that so many, so many sheep stations and so much industrial farming does treat the animals so badly. The tricky thing is for obviously for us and it's always the thing that we're fighting is like there are farmers who are doing the right thing like it isn't just everybody who wants to go out and mistreat animals farms we work with they massively care about the animals they're so kind of emotionally involved with the animals like they really care like it's not they don't see them as as these kind of these things that are just providing an income for them they actually have kind of affection for them and I think that's the, the big difference. This whole kind of black white thing of using animal products has you have to go down into the detail and say there can be exceptions to the rule, right? And I think in that case, animal welfare is something that should just be dived down into. Like if you're approaching a brand that is selling a wool product, whether it's alpaca, whether it's um, you know kind of cashmere, whatever it is, like 
just make sure that you can figure out whether they are actually doing it in a humane way, whether they're harvesting the wool in a humane way, you know, and the animals are well treated. It's just super important. And for us, we had to, right? There's no point in being a sustainable brand if you're ethically unsound because you mistreat the animals. And so we work with ZQ, who have very high standards when it comes to this. The important thing about those is that they, it just means that the animal it lives, lives a good life. And then when it comes to shearing, they use, um, first of all, they, they use mechanical shears. Um, they make sure that it's done as efficiently for the animal as can be. And that doesn't mean quickly, like that's super important to add. It means efficiently. So it means that with minimal distress to the animal. And that is super important for us, again, that that whole process is done as humanely as possible. It also, interestingly, we're actually doing a project at the moment which CQ are currently working on. So historically, we've talked about these five freedoms, which is all about taking away any discomforts from the animal and making sure that there's no distress. But actually, we wanted to we want to kind of pivot that to like, how do we actually make their lives amazing? You know, so it's actually how do you make them have a great life rather than kind of, again, it's a bit like carbon neutrality versus carbon negativity. It's like, how do you actually ensure that they have a great life? Which, by the way, they, they already do, but we want to kind of like bring in the system that ensures that that's also being kind of kept to. That's also a big kind of project we're working on at the moment. So the next area of focus with ZQ is fiber quality. Pretty straightforward. They want high quality fibers. However, what I like about this certification is they emphasize the connection between fiber quality and animal welfare, because if the sheep are stressed and in poor health, it also produces a poor quality fiber. So there is incentive from both an animal welfare perspective and also a quality perspective to have healthy, not stressed out animals. So next, for the environmental sustainability component, each grower is required to create a land environmental plan to manage the impact on their property. And then they also have the ZQRX program, which is another tier that really gets into regenerative practices. So this is very simplified, but essentially a key focus of regenerative farming is storing and keeping carbon in the soil. And when properly managed, soil can be an amazing carbon sink and sheep can be helpful in this process and themselves can also be a carbon sink as wool is roughly 50% carbon. And we'll also see this in practice on my farm visit which will be in the next video. And this is what Edzard also had to say about their environmental sustainability. But we went to them and we said okay so the moment 1% of the wool market could qualify for the ZQ program but who's your 1% of your 1% like are the real innovators of the bunch right? And we identified three farms, again, in New Zealand who were in many ways like real pioneers, but all three of them adopt regenerative farming practices, which means that the amount of CO2 that gets sequestered on the land itself vastly outweighs anything that gets produced by the sheep or any of the farm on farm operations. Again, regenerative farming is you know, kind of like the integration of the sheep play their part in it. It's all about kind of rotational grazing techniques. It's all about making sure that you plant the right type of flora on the um, on the property. And through that process and through working with those farms, we were able to have a raw material with a naturally carbon negative impact. So it meant that per kilogram of wool that we harvest from that farm, 14 kilograms of CO2 is naturally sequestered on the property itself. Now some concerns and critiques about regenerative practices were brought up in my last video, so I want to chat about them quick. First, regenerative has definitely become a sustainability buzzword, and we need to be mindful of how it's being used and if it's being used for greenwashing purposes. I also think it's important to clarify that I think regenerative agriculture will only work when done in conjunction with at minimum a plateauing or hopefully a decrease in demand and production. We simply can't continue to increase the global production of goods and expect regenerative agriculture to make up for that. Wool as part of a regenerative system will only work if the wool clothing is made and bought as a very long-term investment piece. Next is traceability, and if you've been following me, you know that this is unfortunately very rare in the fashion industry. But with ZQ, brands can source directly from certain farms and know exactly where their wool is coming from, which is great for both transparency and accountability. And then finally, there's also a social responsibility component to the certification. So beyond the sheep and sustainability of the farms, ZQ also ensures fair wages, income stability, and safety and health standards for farm workers. 
Now, while I think overall this is a good comprehensive certification, no certification is perfect. Certifications can help show customers that certain requirements have been met and that there are checks and audits, but I am still very wary of brands who seem to get certified or buy certified materials and think that's it, that's all they need to do. Certifications should be seen as part of a greater environmental or social impact plan. And I think that if a brand truly believes in what the certification is trying to achieve, then they will go above and beyond anyway, versus a brand who is just getting the certification for marketing or sales purposes. As always, ask brands questions and try your best to determine who is actually walking the walk. Now, another option outside of the ZQ certification is looking for brands who are very transparent about their wool sourcing. Likely these brands own or work directly with specific fiber farms so they know exactly what's happening in their supply chain. Or if you're a knitter, source directly from local farms, ideally ones that you can even visit yourself. Each brand or farm though is going to be different and have different information available and different practices. So the best thing you can do is simply ask questions. In my experience, farmers and brands that work directly sourcing from farms are often more than happy to share what they're doing and answer questions. And in the next video in the series, I can't wait to share with you my visit to a wool farm and everything that I learned and saw. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.